Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And our third video today, we've got so much content, guys. I've already got four videos lined up for tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed. I just can't get get to it all. I'm going to have an update on Tyler Cameron mentioning how demanding he was for wanting to be The Bachelor. I've got a video where Rachel Lindsay says she's going to be watching the new season of Golden Bachelor. And I've got Michael A. saying he was the highest paid Bachelor in Paradise star of all time. That and more on tomorrow's uh, episodes. But right now we've got Caitlin Bristow reacting to her exes having babies, namely her two exes, Sean Booth and Nick Vial, both having babies, uh, some of them intentional, some of them not. And speaking of babies that weren't intentional, we made a video to start the day today and I'm, I'm handling it, I hope, hope as sensitively as possible, where a woman is accusing Clayton Eckerd of being the baby daddy to her twins that she is carrying. She would be about four or five months pregnant as it is right now, and she's taken him to court. Well, we've got the court document here. Um, I'm not going to share the name of the person because they don't want their name out there, even though this is public information. But this is the petitioner, which is the Jane Doe, and Clayton Eckert is the respondent, and she is essentially uh, going through the court system to try to get, I'm assuming, um, parental, what, what would it be called here, uh, a ch uh, uh, support, right? Um child support or ch uh, ch uh, children's support. It should be called because she's got twins. Now, Clayton says he didn't even have sex with her. Uh, so a paternity test, I'm assuming, will be taken at this event next week. It's about to get pretty wild. If you want to see me talk about this live, uh, I was just on the Patreon here and you can see my discussion as we find out who the petitioner was. That information is available for the private members only. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Go check it out. Now, does that have anything to do with Caitlin Bristow? No, but every day we've got ongoing stories and I have to get to them as I see fit. So that's what we're doing right now. Let's get into Caitlin Bristow. She has a fascinating conversation with Amanda Hirsch from uh, Not Skinny, Not Fat. I think her podcast is called, is that what it's called? Either way, we'll get into it. Oh, uh, yeah, not skinny, but not fat. Uh, which, by the way, is a very slim, uh, no, no pun intended, place to be. I mean, imagine if she gains weight or loses weight, it's going to change the branding of the show. Not skinny, but not fat. Um, and here she is. So Caitlin's going to discuss two things. She's going to discuss how Jason Tartik is making his quote-unquote rounds now that he's single, and they speculate on if there's bachelor women uh, in his DMs. And then Caitlin responds to finding out her two exes are pregnant as she's ending her engagement. Very fascinating stuff. Have a listen. That, Just so they know. D yeah. Well, if they're doing the research. Yeah, they, they, could they, and they could take some, they could put some effort and find out. Yeah, because you know? Kristen Cavallari was talking about how she wants to be courted. And I was like, I like that. Like, somebody could try. Slide into my DMs. Somebody. Yeah. I'm not, I might not respond or I might not be interested. I'm not ready to date yet, but yeah. like, I would like to feel flattered. Yeah. There it is, folks. Slide into Caitlin Bristow's DMs. She's got a wine business. Hey, maybe you own a plot of land that can be turned into a vineyard. We could make this some sort of uh, Christmas Hallmark movie. Yeah. I'm sure girls are sliding into Jason's. You think? Oh, oh for, for sure. sure. Oh, for sure. And that is true. Women, girls, ladies, the females, a binder full of them, are all sliding into Jason's DMs. I am sure uh, there are people, oh, hey, how are you? Uh, if you ever want to talk, feel free. Let's get a coffee. So, you know, all the all of the uh, ice breaking that happens in the DMs. How like much supporters of, of how mine much, are going in there. How much, how many... Bachelor Nation girlies, do you think are sliding in? Oh, he, well, he's those doing are, his. He's those doing, are. He's doing his Bachelor Nation rounds, though. What, is, like on podcasts? No, well, yes, and like going to U.S. Open with all Bachelor people, going to clubs with Bachelor uh, people. So yeah, I'm sure there's some Bachelor girlies in there. Oh. Which, uh, which is fair. I mean, Caitlin's been to Europe twice now in the last month, and she's allowed to go around, and, and you know, they're now no longer together. Now, Jason and Caitlin have done nothing but speak kindly of each other. I don't expect that to change. I think it's totally fair. Uh, given their circumstance, for Caitlyn to have this conversation and this fodder, I don't think that's a big deal whatsoever. Uh, but it's also not a big deal for Jason if he wants to, sh you know, reintroduce himself. And you know, that's what, when you break up. It's like, yeah, it, he's not going to stay at home in his new rental, you know, petting his dogs all night. No, he's going to go out. He's going to rekindle bromances. He's going to go on guy trips. He's going to meet some ladies. We're going to report on it. You know. Oh, I would. 
uh, guarantee they're a bachelor girl. They want to be a bachelor nation couple I don't with blame Jason Tardic right now. Yeah. And then Caitlin says, I don't blame them. And I also, I had a surprise for you guys today. I received some mail. As you guys know, I get mail every once in a while. And I just received something from Denise. And I was told to open it on air. So this is, this is something that came to me from Denise here. Hold on a second, folks. All right. So <laughs> here it is. Oh, boy. Oh, this. I don't know if this is going to show up on the green screen. It is a barrel scraping hat here, and it says barrel scraping Dave. Look at this with a nice... All right, we'll wear this for the rest of the episode. So fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, barrel scraping Dave here. Let's go back to what Caitlin and Amanda had to say. It gets juicy. It's going to prepare yourself. I feel that like kills my me. pop culture, my pop culture. Oh my God, do you think he's going to date another bachelor girl? I think... I don't, I'm not saying it's going to come from him, but I definitely think Bachelor Nation girls are going to try because, one, they're thirsty. Yeah. And, like, it'll be a good look. Yeah. Like, it'll be a... Good storyline. Good story, yeah. I'm a, uh, is Amanda not Caitlin Bristow's friend? I feel like... Even if you just ended your engagement, even if it was a month or two months ago, for Amanda to be like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna he's gonna date another bachelor person," that feels kind of off to me. Oh, and God. he's cute, and he's like Jason, you know. But but I could so see it, and I'm sure a lot of regular girl girlies from Buffalo are sliding oh, for sure. in too. Oh, all of them. Yeah, yeah. I have another question for you though, because stupidly, I, you're not coming on my podcast this time. You're in New York. Yeah. Okay. Next time. Okay. Um, interview me. Go. Um. Your tiny feet. I can't stop looking at them. They're, They're so tiny. Happy. Okay, come on. Um, I mean, I love a good tiny foot here, but let's get to the tea. So after you broke up, yeah, everyone was, I mean, to me, it felt like that. It was coming out that Nick was having a baby and Sean was having oh, a baby. Oh, God, I know. Like, and everyone was like, poor Caitlin. I, Did you feel like poor Caitlin? Only because people were making me feel mm. that way. Deep down in my soul, no. Okay. Because. Like, it's unrelated to you. God. I know so much tea about those things too yeah. where i'm like you're no. not like you're not like oh i'm what like i could have had no yeah caitlin back the tea up come on let's hear it. if you just park it over here just drop the tea she says she has so much tea she knows what could the tea be i'm assuming she's got more tea on Sean Booth, uh, only because Sean's relationship seemed to be more casual. I mean, what do I know? Uh, we Let's find out. And there's situations with those two relationships where I'm like, I would never want that. Yeah. That seems miserable to me. I'm happy that for them, if they want a baby and that's like a miracle of life, like that's incredible. I just know too much. Yeah. Where I go, no, I don't feel sad for me at all. I feel like I am like a strong, brave woman who is choosing all, my own are. happiness. First who of all, knows, you are. Like, I know that deep down thank you for confirming i know that and so she said it seems miserable to her and again we don't exactly know what she's referencing it could be sean booth it could be having a baby when you're not in love maybe maybe that idea is miserable to her co-parenting and things like that really not sure i don't i i would i would imagine she's speaking about sean booth and not nick because i don't know why she would assume nick's miserable because they're engaged or starting a family and all that and so the noise makes me question that sometimes and then i have to just take a step back and go no bitch the timing was interesting because timing so is funny because timing is like that in life but yeah the narrative of like poor caitlin you know but, it, caitlin, but were you ass. also like oh that's a nice change from home wrecking caitlin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like wait are people having sympathy for me this is who called caitlin a home wrecker i feel like amanda's kind of I don't know. I don't know what their relationship is, but it doesn't feel that friendly. I, 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 didn't, I don't know if people calling Caitlin Bristow a homewrecker of all the things that people might say because, you know, people are mean. Um, but either way, it is. I mean, it, it her last two exes, uh, I mean, I'm assuming Nick. So, she, she, so, yeah, Nick was her second to last ex because she moved. So she dumps Nick, ends up with Sean, that ends, and then she goes to Jason. All perfectly fair. But her last two exes, the fact that in a one-month span, we find out that Sean and Nick are both having children, I mean, you don't, it's not really projecting onto Caitlyn. It's just a burn. It's a burn that they're going in one direction and her relationship was ending, even though that's perfectly fair for her. I think it's good for her to choose herself.
kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. that was crazy though. I'm yeah. like, here she goes again, like break going through a breakup at 38 while her two exes are having babies at the same time. <laughs> like it's just wild. It's just wild the it, way life is. Yeah. Timing is so funny. But again, like timing is funny. You didn't take it there. I didn't because I mean, I I wouldn't want to have a baby yeah. out of like you wouldn't want just because of my age because that's where I should be yeah. because um Jason is on paper so great and I should be doing this like yeah. no I'm not gonna live my life like that and yeah. the people that are so mad at me for it are the people that aren't brave enough to do it themselves yeah first of all I and the truth is is that no one else knows what their relationship was no one knows if Jason was kicking the can down the road or whatever moral issues they didn't see eye to eye on or their business like sure they could have been happy and together but it wasn't meant to be and you shouldn't you shouldn't ignore the red flags because you are 38 and you should have a kid you know like you can choose to abandon or, or end this relationship choose yourself and Invest in yourself. Raise your your quote unquote stock as high as possible. Be the best version of yourself. And somebody that's ready will come along. And you might only need to be together for two months. I mean, look at Claire Crowley, right? She chose herself, and this dream guy came along, and it took her a couple extra years, but she's been able to make it work. I I I know it's a weird uh, reaction to have, but when people break up, I'm not like happy. But I am, I have the sense of like, good for them. Yeah. Because I know that it's hard. I've seen it yeah. be hard for people. I know how many people are in situations that they're in just because they can't take that step. Mm -hmm. So to me, when people break up, it's not like, it is sad, but it's also like, I understand what it takes to do it. it really so hard, I yeah. am sure that it's because they shouldn't be together. Yeah. So then I'm happy for those two yes. people. That's that how they get to like at it. live their lives, you know. Didn't Emrata? Emrata just said that it's so chic to be, you know, divorced. yeah, divorced. Yeah, Emily Ratajkowski said it's she's divorced, but it's okay. She doesn't need a man. And the truth is, that's easy to say when you're in a position which is a good position to be in with it, which is financial independence. But it's also the type of thing you say like, yeah, of course you feel that way now, but don't negate, you know, finding your person and having someone to share it. Like don't negate all of that uh, just because it didn't work for you in this current moment. Like keep the door open is my point. And I'm sure Caitlin is doing just that. She's got a lot of business going on. Um, she's got a lot to keep her busy. And I think that's good for her. Continue to invest in yourself, take some time to do that. And maybe the right guy will, come along and maybe maybe not for now but of course the, you know good, good on her but very interesting uh, I guess we're allowed to speculate what the hell she was talking about with regards to things she knows that she's not talking about that make her uh, not want to be in the position of Nick and or Sean uh, but uh, of course very fair conversation I love that we're getting a, a glimmer of this I love because Jason also is talking about the breakup in his own way. He's talking about how hard it is. And, you know, on paper, it's looked like it's been very hard on him. He moved out of the house and he's, you know, doing his tour de force. And Caitlin, you know, um, speculating with the help of Amanda over here. Caitlin speculating on oh, who might be sliding into Jason's DMs. All right, folks. Well, we're going to have a lot of content to get to. So double check. Make sure you're subscribed. You might think you are, but double check because a lot of you guys are not. Actually, 50% of our audience isn't subscribed. And we could use all of the help with the YouTube algorithm. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. And if you want to get some of the behind-the-scenes tea, because trust me, it's about to get kind of crazy out there. Go to Patreon dot com slash Dave Neal and you can see us discussing the court case that Clayton is caught up in. All right. We'll see you on today's afternoon Bachelor Rush Hour podcast. That's coming up next.